Hi guys, uh, indeed my pleasure to have Kevin Arvind Raghavan. He is a, a cloud performance architect with a huge experience in performance and reliability engineering. Um, he is our esteemed speaker for ATA GTR 2022. By the way, he has been our speaker for few last past editions of GTR as well. He brings in immense, uh, what do you call knowledge and immense kind of learnings into the conference. And I'm glad that he's here. Uh, I would discuss about his topic, but in the meanwhile, I would request him to uh, talk a little bit about himself. I think he is joining from the e East Coast, North Carolina. So um, how are you, uh, Kevin? And can you yeah. quickly talk about yourself before we jump into your topic? Yeah, thanks, Aditya, for the introduction. I'm doing good. Hope you're going, doing fine. Um, so I'm a performance architect with 12 years of experience in performance and reliability engineering, and I'm working with Cognizant for the past 12 years. And I have some strong, uh, strong expertise in architecting and designing solutions for validating the cloud performance, both server-side and client-side, and also the resilience. And I'm also specialized in uh, AWS and GCP cloud performance engineering, along with the resilience engineering. And I have architected a few cloud chaos frameworks for AWS and GCP using some open source tools, and I have presented that in a few of the conferences. So um, my uh, current work areas include a performance testing, performance engineering, chaos engineering, and uh, into observability sometimes. So, so uh, about me in action. Great. I think, uh, guys, uh, there would be no other better person than Kevin to talk about something which he is uh, expert in. Okay. He, he comes with a very solid experience and he is presenting a very interesting topic. It says applying SRE, Site Reliability Engineering Principles, to containers, Kubernetes Chaos Engineering, SRE Best Practices for Containers. So um, it, it's a very interesting topic and I want you to quickly talk about it. Don't get into too much detail. We want uh, all the, the masala to come out in the conference though. So, but still, if you can talk a little bit about it. Sure. So the target audience for this uh, presentation would be uh, chaos engineers and also performance engineers who are exploring into uh, chaos engineering space. Um, and uh, the topic I'm going to present is uh, applying SRE principles to containers, um, which in natural is a Kubernetes resilient system or Kubernetes chaos engineering. Last year conference, we talked about uh, chaos engineering introduction and few of the frameworks that we can use for uh, uh, AWS chaos engineering. And this time we are going to cover about uh, uh, testing the applications or validating the infrastructure for the application services that are hosted in uh, Kubernetes. So Amazing. that's going to be the topic. Yeah. So Kevin, it's been 12 years into this field. How do you keep your uh, passion going? It's, it's been amazing. I can see that kind of exposure you have, kind of experience you have. How do you keep that going? What, what keeps you kicking? Okay, so uh, from the day one, we are working with clients and uh, with every change in client every uh, two years or every year, uh, there's a change in customer demands and every uh, your client is demanding. So whether the when we started in 2010, when most of the applications are in data centers, and towards 2015, when the application started going to cloud, and now when all the applications are in cloud and they're exploring further into uh, digital space, so it's the changing customer demands that uh, demand us to um, strengthen our uh, profile, to learn new technologies and uh, uh, present new solutions for the customers. So uh, I would say that keeps us going. Okay, very good. So Kubernetes and container management software like Kubernetes are extremely popular. Uh, are there failure points? Like what exactly make them fail? What exactly has been your experience? And I think that's what okay. probably you're going to discuss as well, but I just want to understand that they are considered to be very reliable. Still they fail. So what makes them fail? Correct. So, uh, so uh, uh, before coming into that, uh, so let me cover in a very brief way about how the application services are deployed. So the application can be deployed in threefold. It can uh, uh, be deployed in uh, compute instances, like which is uh, uh, something equivalent of uh, VMs, or they can be deployed in uh, containers, or they can be deployed in serverless components. So uh, when they are deployed in uh, containers, so they'll be running in nodes and pods. So um, the failure points here could be the pods and nodes. So uh, suppose there's a pod failure or if the pod goes down 
or if the node is like uh, restarted or if the node is terminated um, or the service running inside the pod or node if it is having any internal error or it is like uh, uh, the consuming service uh, running in a pod if it is um, uh, the, if the upstream service is down what happens if the consuming service uh, is receiving an incorrect error code so uh, or what happens if there's a latency in the uh, nodes and pods that is hosted in a particular zone in the cloud so uh, all these kind of scenarios lead into Kubernetes uh, resilience validation. And uh, the key uh, principles that I'm going to touch during this presentation is uh, categorized into six, actually. So I'm going to talk about uh, how we are going to shift left into the dev cycle to identify these failures early in the testing life cycle and how we are going to shift right into production, uh, like how we can validate these things for the application that is already live in production and how we are going to test this for every Kubernetes uh, changes for every Canada deployment or something, and how we are validating the application resilience, how we are validating infrastructure resilience, and finally, how we are going to benchmark the application with the uh, resilience score, which gives a score to the product teams, uh, mentioning that their application has a reliability score of this, and they can be confident about uh, their application's reliability in production. And I am on mute. This would be one of the most oh, yeah. interesting presentation, uh, and I would recommend this to everybody. So, guys, uh, do, just don't uh, like I would say, just don't worry about anything else. If there are four parallel tracks, you got to make sure that you go into Kevin's uh, presentation. Just one last question, Kevin. So, you have been in US for some time because last time also when I was talking, you were there, right? Or you keep on traveling to India? Um, no, I am here for the past uh, three years. Yeah. Okay. So how has how has it been your experience like uh, being there and representing Cognizant? How how exactly is is life out there? Uh, so when I landed in US, uh, the COVID started, and uh, from the day one, I was at working from home setup, and I never experienced going to uh, offices to meet client. And um, fortunately, over the past two quarters, we have returned to office, and uh, uh, we are reporting to clients, and uh, we are meeting the clients in person and see how their business model has changed during COVID. Uh, before COVID, their business model was completely different and now it's uh, different and almost each and every shop, every entity in US, they are having application to serve online. Wow. So uh, we could see uh, uh, post COVID, uh, IT has been more predominantly uh, uh, into space in US. Very nice. <laughs> and in, yeah, sorry, in your free time, what exactly do you do, Kevin? So I know you, are a hardcore techie and you're into performance and performance architect is your core passion. What is uh, other than basically your work, what excites you on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, so as most of the persons, food and uh, movies are my passion and we often play tennis here. Uh, we explore places nearby and we travel during uh, uh, fall or winter to explore the different climates here. So. That's how we keep on uh, going, travel, food, and uh, sometimes uh, tennis. What is your favorite dish that you make? Or you just um, are into eating something you don't make? I think you said food, so I, I'm expecting that you also make some food, right? Yeah, so one interesting thing is, um, and now considering more Indians are in US, uh, Indian food are available uh, um, uh, in almost all the places here. And to be frank, biryani is available in a... Um, very good uh, taste compared to a few parts of India. So biryani is my favorite here. Okay, very nice. Good. It was amazing to talk to you, Kevin. Thank you so much for giving us time. You have been a very busy person and I appreciate you giving us so much time. Uh, thanks a lot and we look forward for your presentation. Thanks a lot. Sure. Thanks, Antia.